Buenos Dias Gunners Collective. Back at it, you already know. Like a motherfucking smack at it, man. As you can tell by today's thumbnail. Yes, indeedy. We're going to reiterate a story that's been told many times. But I've never told it in a real fashion, in a real way, like it needs to be told. So, Sabasque, let's get into it, man. We're going to talk about the Cap Saloon incident, right? Something that happened in Salinas in the Cap Saloon. You know, trip out, man. This story, there's a lot of different twists and turns with this story, right? And in a menudo style and direct fashion, I could tell you, man, that it involves a lot of key players at that time in Salas within the regiment, La Nuestra Familia, the Hermanos, Nuestra Raza. It's just a big old thing that went on, man. And it's a big case that's forever going to stay in the city of Salinas, right? So what you had, Holmes, is you had a guy named Armando Frias, right? And uh, quite contrary to what anyone said, man, I know he's done interviews on different channels and said his take on the spill, man. But from the outside looking in, I could tell you that Armando Frias was nothing but your average Norteño, a northerner um, striving for the cause. You know, as a youngster growing up in the Salinas area, you know, a, he knew nothing but how to do it and put it to it and do it in a real fashion, in a direct way, a menudo style, you know. The Vata was out there wiggling, you know. He came from his father being a Norteño, lacing him up, putting him up to par, putting him up on game, man, and basically directing him into that gang life. Of course, as a parent, none of us want to see our kids go that route, you know. Anyone in their righteous, right way of thinking in mind are like, Charlie, oh, fuck that, man. I don't want you being bound. But usually, it's what's going to happen. You become a role model for your child. They see that. They see the red ponios, the blue ponios, whatever the case may be, the dog paws or whatever it is, and uh, they go that route. So quietly as it's kept, this is the way that Armando Frias went. You know, he went the route of his father. You know, who else to look up to but your jefito? And so that's what he did. He was always around, uh, uh, you know, gang members, the barrio, Salinas as a whole, man, is very gang infested. You know, a stronghold for the Norteños. You got Sureños there. You got Norteños. The motherfuckers are clapping every day. The wiggleization is real. Old school barrios, a lot of historia, a lot of history, a big NF influence in that city. So for no other reason, this Vato went the Norteño route and he was striving. You know, he was striving as a youngster, trying to become, you know, something of that next level. You know, trying to gain some status within the gang. And uh, quiet as kept from Vatos that I've talked to and people that I've talked to that actually know him. Um, they're saying that Armando Frias, you know, was a, was a good youngster. Was a good youngster, a good strong mind, Holmes, good mentality. Was about the business, was with it. At the end of the day, man, you know, was willing to do whatever he had to do for the cause and what he believed in. You know, and that's all you can ask from young soldados. Just do what is a righteously asked of you to assist La Casa. And so along them lines at that time, what you had, you had a Volta that was running the regiment out there, you know. One Daniel Ashley Lizard Hernandez. Now, we're going to get into a spill about him. A lot of people have talked about him. And I've talked about him in the past, man. This was a rogue, very eccentric, vicious uh, character, right? Not the kind of Vato that you run up on. This Vato basically had everything on lock. And he was playing all sides of the fence. He played a big part into the Black uh, Widow operation. You know, Operation Black Widow. And taking down the head of the NF. Which started this whole federal and state faction. And got the snowstorm and the snowball rolling, right? And we're going to get to him on a different spill. Uh, I got a lot to uh, elaborate on uh, Daniel Lizard Hernandez, you know. He actually came out on that, uh, what was it? It was called uh, Gangland. Gangland, they call me, I bleed on there. I die for NF. I eat fucking spreads when I was in the NF. This Vato um, was all that and a bag of chips at one point in time, Holmes, but he wore the wire and did what he had to do, and all that didn't count anymore, you know? Uh, I'm not saying that fucking uh, people don't fucking get back to the corner and do what they do for their own specific reasons. Hey, I ain't got nothing bad to say about that. I'm just saying that this particular individual was a cutthroat individual that seemed like he was more out for himself than anyone else or trying to uplift and bring up the little homies. Anyways, quietly as it's kept, the Vato plays a big part in this story. So, um, it goes down in a fucking bar called Cap Saloon, right? Cap Saloon, and there was a Vato there, man. There was a Vato there that had not been wanting to pay taxes, and not necessarily taxes, but contributions. See, Norteños, NF, call it differently from what the Emmett call it taxes. You know, in the NF, it's known as contributions. Hey, would you like to contribute to the cause? Charlie, okay, well, watch out. Sass, motherfucker, we're going to take it then. You know, you're going to be asked to contribute, and you're going to contribute. You know, contributions uh, uh, are highly accepted and highly, 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 you know what I mean, um, asked for, you know, in, in, them, in them words. Anyway, what the watch out. So, 
this Vato Armando Frias was at this cap saloon and this Vato comes in, right? This Vato comes in, it's an all point bulletin on him. Everyone's been trying to catch this town, catch this Vato in the town. This Vato's been out there in Chinatown, which is a notoriously uh, uh, ran place by Norteños as well as NF Stronghold. And he was out there, David Sand, this guy named uh, Raymond Sanchez, Spencer. Raymond Sanchez was out there fucking doing what he was doing, wiggling for his independently rogue, was not trying to give the NF. You know, he was trying to participate in any of their reindeer games and kick down. He wasn't trying to contribute. What the? So at that point in time, man, his name was put on a lista and he was to be dealt with and accordingly and in a vicious fashion. So as this about Armando Frias, this youngster, he's at the pool hall, Cap Saloon. He's playing a little pool, man, at the bar. And uh, this Raymond Sanchez is actually kicking it with some vato named uh, um, Joe Cantu. You know, Joe Cantu, him and his homeboy Joe Cantu are kicking back at the bar when fucking Armando Frias fucking uh, spots him. He's like that puto right there, the big old whip. Mm -hmm. Bing, da, bang. And he's seen that at that point in time, man, this was his chance. This was his chance to earn his stripes. This was his chance to earn his spot within the organization. Maybe push up, maybe move up. He was already associated with the who's who in Salas, right? But now was his time to make his mark. You know, a lot of people think that way. At one point in time, I even thought that way. So if I pull the wiggleization right here, and then, the, you know, if I bust a couple left, it's like, what does it go? And a couple rights, you know what I mean? Maybe I can get where I want to get, you know, where I want to get to. So anyways, he's seen this perfect opportunity. And he made a couple phone calls, or this is what the word goes. And he called a couple people that were, let's just say higher than him. And I'm not going to use their names, man. A couple of them are actually good friends of mine. You know, I consider good friends. But he called a couple of these individuals and uh, to get the green light, basically. Hey, what do I do? So I was, hey, look, at watch. I got him in my radar, in my sights right now. Should I clap his shit back or what should I do? You know, I mean, I could smack his whole head backwards if I need to. And a uh, word on the curb was he was told to stand his ground and not do nothing right while these individuals talk to one daniel lizard ashley hernandez okay of course lizard's fucking story was he said no stand down charlie don't make no moves on this vato it's only gonna bring heat to us now at this time daniel lizard ashley hernandez what a lot of people didn't know was he was a confidential informant for the federal government he had been working for the feds wiretapping and and uh doing all kinds of things man to help assist in this operation black widow so of course man him still running the streets running the regiment he doesn't want nothing to happen because at that point in time man it could get all pointed at him and so he's trying to cut him a nice deal he ain't trying to fucking get caught up of course he's still out there wiggling still out there doing it so his story was that he told armando frias his handlers or not handlers but the people that were above him to stand down about the right and that they reiterated to him to stand down but armando frias's story is different and he's told it on several occasions that he did not receive that uh, message the message he received was full 60 which means full go which means clap his shit fucking in half you know what i mean uh so without question man what this youngster did was he went to the carro and went and got him a nice little a little something, something to work with, a pistol, and uh, came in. Now, Raymond Sanchez, the victim in this situation, as well as his homeboy Joe Cantu, uh, criminal de Salas, were actually kicking back, homes, relaxing, just having a little drink, maybe a little bite tea, doing their thing, when Armando Frias came up behind them and shot Raymond Sanchez in the back of the neck and head, right? He staggered to the alley where he collapsed. Joseph Cantu was also shot in this incident, right? Where he staggered away too to be assisted by the police and disappear and tell his story. Um, I actually ran into the Vato and I'm going to tell you that story here in a minute. But anyway, so with this going on, of course, Armando Frias flees. He ends up getting caught up. It's a big deal in the city of Salas. People start flipping right from the gate. Um, this is kind of what gets the ball rolling. Asha, the fingers are pointed in Asha Lee Hernandez's way, saying that he gave the order to do this. He's saying, Charlie, you got me fucked up, Holmes. I would never do that. And no one's ever going to know quite righteously, man, unless you were there and you heard the word spoken. You know, I'm sure there are Vatos that are doing time on this particular case, you know, that know the ins and outs and have the paperwork. But at this time, Holmes, I am not at liberty to say who they are and what's going on because I'm scared. Like I said, a couple of them are my homeboys and we just ain't going to go that route. Um, but at the same time, it was just a fucking big, a big case in the city of Salas that kind of spiraled out. You know, it's what brought a lot of attention to the Norteños, to the regiments, to everything in Salas at that particular time. 
Because like I said, man, this got that snowball going. This got fingers pointed at Asha Lee. It seemed like the feds tried to cover it up for him and spring into action. And then, of course, the Black Widow case happened. And when the Black Widow case happened, e for the C, we already know what happened. All the generals were fucking uh, rearrested and moved from here to Santa Rita. From Santa Rita, they were placed in the ADX and federal prisons around the United States. And that's what got the ball rolling on this federal and state faction to where we are now today. Where now the state, with this Operation Quiet Storm, the generals who took the generals' place, the original generals, have now formed their own thing. And now they're arrested on a new indictment you know the indictments just keep on going man this shit's not gonna stop till the panties drop and even when they drop sasuke fuck it you already know what it is man they're just gonna keep making it happen that's what the federal government does but see there's always been a lot of questions into this case reason being that armando frias brought up a lot of different things you know he said his story's always been a little bit different from these other Vatos. And I've heard his story, man. He did interviews on different channels. And I actually had the privilege of running into this Vato one time in a Yadva. He don't remember me. Um, I thought his attitude towards everyone else was he was better than them, right? Because he had a little bit of fame based on uh, his situation. So it's, can you told Vato. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> you know, none of that means nothing to me. Um, if we were all pinta bound. It was what it was. Anyone could get it. But at the end of the day, there's no animosity and no hate in my heart for this individual. I'm only saying and stating true facts, man. I'm saying he was a striving young Norteño that did what he had to do. Now, was he wrong for doing that? Of course, man, nobody is fucking in their right state of mind. And no one is righteous when smacking a motherfucker, not at least smacking him from the back, doing whatever he had to do. But you got to understand, man, he thought in his mind he was righteously doing this for the cause. He was doing what was asked of him as a young striving Norteño. So you can't look down upon him for that, for his beliefs and what he truly believed in. Now, how was this going to benefit the cause? It didn't matter, Holmes, to him. This is what was being directed, and it benefited his cause. His cause meaning to elevate his status within that group faction, right? Period. Plain and simple. Now, of course, Asha Lee on the other side has a totally different story. And Asha Lee's story was yeah, at, one, at no point in time did he ever receive a phone call. And when he did receive one, if it was even pertaining to that, he was told these authors to stand down. Of course, it was not communicated like that to Armando Frias. So somewhere along the line, man, wires got crossed and shit happens. Okay. Now let's talk about Raymond Sanchez a little bit. You know, Raymond, I've heard a lot of different things. Raymond Sanchez was an NF dropout. Raymond Sanchez was never an NF member. He was just a Lord Daniel dropout. Then I've heard that Raymond Sanchez was just a fucking local street fucking dealer. All right. Whatever the case may be, I can't sit here and tell you the exact details on what this Bob Wilson was. What he is, is dead. That's fucking truth. That's fact. Let me stamp that real quick. You know, and, and, and it happens. When you're out there in a stronghold that's controlled by, say, the Nuestra Familia or La M, right? You're going to pay to play, homes. You're just not going to go in these cities, man, and think, Orale, man, I ain't, fuck the, right there. I ain't paying them nothing. No, no. Uh-uh. I beg to differ. Right? I think you're going to pay. You know, I think you're going to pay. Someone's going to pay. So it's, they don't give a fuck where it comes from. So it's, we need that. You know what I mean? We need that guy. I need two cases of chili soap boss. Four hot ones, two bottles of shampoo, and a thing of Folgers. And in that fashion, now, what the, not today, not tomorrow, fucking right now, it should be in my cell. You know what I mean? Forward that. Um, but this Vato decided that if for some reason, man, he was Superman, Holmes, and he wasn't going to do that. And he wiggled for a time. He wiggled for a while, man. I know gente that knew this Vato personally that are saying that he was out there doing his thing, man, in a nonchalant fashion, uh, a bait in a nonchalant fashion, excuse me, basically going into bars, kicking it around uh, Salas, not hiding, and his fucking time came. You know, it's only a matter of time before your time comes, man, when your all eyes are on you, you're a wanted man, and, and people are tripping off you for one reason or another. You know, when it comes to feria and things of that nature, man, you better kick in or get kicked in. You know, he decided, of course, plan B or this, take the second door to the right, meaning I ain't going to do none of that. And look what happened. My wassail should have just paid right to play. Um, but they, of course, man, when you pay, now you're fucking in the clutches and Sasuke gets worse and worse and worse and worse till, you know what I mean? Till they end up burning the bar down and Sasuke, Joe Pesci's kicking into the, oh, wait up, wrong movie. Anyways, you know what I'm talking about. Um, it just gets bad. But... If you look at it from the outside looking in, it's a cold situation. You have a man that lost his life for something such as frivolous as money. You have another individual that was working with the federal government to take down a whole bunch of grown men from which he was can canales with. Part of the group faction, part of the mob. You know what I mean? I felt that for no other reason. And we're going to touch on that subject pretty soon. 
that he should fucking work with the federal government to take these vultures down based on he wasn't having it his way or he felt he was being disrespected or no, not looked at in the same light that he should be, you know? And we're going to talk about that in detail. Then over here, you have a youngster, Armando Frias, that was misled, homes. That's the only way I could look at it, was misled, you know? Of course, he did what he did for the cause, man. A lot of people make a lot of moves. You know, the homeboy Spukio from Salas, he made his moves. I, at one point in time, made my moves. Everybody makes their moves for their beliefs and the cause, man. Ain't nothing wrong with that, man. You stand on your tent and you do your thing. But at the end of the day, what is it for, homes? What did that get him but a life sentence? And now looked down upon and frowned upon. And basically, uh, 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 he plays a big part into the historia of getting the fucking ball rolling on all the shit that took these federal fucking generals down, you know? Because people always go back and they look at that case. You know, that's part of it. Everything is dialed into one big old fucking thing. Hey, so what, the capsule donuts, it never happened. Then they fucking would have never fucking looked at Ashley. And then Ashley would have never. But you would, hey, that had nothing to do with it, Holmes. Daniel Lizard Hernandez was already telling anyways, bro. He was already telling, Vato. You know I mean? It was only a matter of time. These Vatos were on borrowed time anyways. To not which they care, Holmes. All they did was spread their well uh, bird wings uh, further and reached them out to the feds. And then, you know. But then, of course, we wouldn't have had all this. But quietly as it's kept, it actually played a part into the end of hostilities. Now we have the end of hostilities. So that was a good thing that came out of this. But at what? At the sacrifice of a youngster, man, that's never going to see the streets again. At the sacrifice of a Vato, man, that's now buried six feet. At the sacrifice of a fucking uh, uh, Vato that fucking told on the, the whole world. You know, these are the things that happen in gang life. You know, and it's part of it. You know, it's just uh, one case of many. It's just an intricate fucking part and a piece into the puzzle of the NF. Because you got to understand, that cap saloon was, was, man, I was hearing it for all the way from Merced, California. You know, it was a big thing. It was a big thing because a lot of true heavy hitters, man, that were involved out there in Salas got caught up and wrapped up in this case. Now, like I said, man, you could Google it for yourself and find out who was all involved. There's a couple of them that are my homeboys, so I'm not going to mention their names. But I will say this. Um, it got a, a lot of righteous individuals all day, man, or pretty close to it. And, um, you know, it, it just be like that sometimes. You know, people start saying a little too much. And, you know, of course, the blackers are going to twist it one way, they, however they want to twist it. And at the end of the day, man, they're going to get off all these motherfuckers off the streets that they want to, man. That's just the way the game goes, you know. One little incident could cause a fucking domino effect that blows up the whole spot. Um, now, as far as Armando Frias going, man, I wish him the best. It's all respect and love, man. I hope that whatever he's doing in his endeavors in life, now that his life has changed, um, he knows what he did wrong. He knows where he went wrong, man. And I'm sure he has a lot of remorse and he probably sits back in that cell like, Ah, they did me dirty, you know? He got told on before anything, and then he started, you know, uh, telling, you know? Of course, he's not going to say he did, man. He's not being transparent with his ways. But it is what it is, man. If you look into the case, man, uh, a lot of authors told on that case. Um, and there was a lot of incidents that happened about that case, man. People were getting whacked in court. People were getting sliced, cut up, beat up, jumped, stuck. I mean, it was just a big deal, you know? And, of course, Lizard was over the, out there proclaiming them. I don't know shit, right? And this Vato was out there doing the most dirt than everybody, Humps, and using the federal government to back his... Ora, la onda, I don't need you. The federal government's going to back my play. You know what I mean? And this is what he was doing. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that the federal government knew what he was doing at that particular time. I'm sure they didn't. You know, I'm sure they did it, man. This guy was even manipulating them. So at the end, uh, he didn't come out a winner, winner, chicken dinner as well, man. Um, but at the end of the day, and when, quietly, when it's all said and done, man, it's just another cold story of what could happen out in the mean streets and them gang lives, you know. And the city of Salinas is very vicious, very treacherous. And there's been a lot more incidents after that. This is just one, man, that's always talked about and one I thought I would put out there for the hint bit. Now, of course, you know, a lot of people have put their spin on it. A lot of people have told you about it. But see, I have a little bit of more details because, see, I actually did time out of state. And when I was actually doing time out of state, I remember a few Norteños. There wasn't a lot of Norteños there. So every homeboy that we had, man, we embraced. It was all love, man. You know, we needed every soldado we had. There was more Sureños than there was Norteños. And I remember one day, an older Vata walks in, you know, older than me, big wit, walks in, man, and uh, introduces himself as criminal de Salas, you know, or Chilo de Salas, dispensa Chilo de Salas. And... Uh, I remember his last name was Cantu, and I didn't put two and two together, man, until later on, uh, I actually hit him up. I was like, hey, are you fucking Joe Cantu, the one from the Salas incident? And he was. And I said, well, what happened? Holmes, how'd you end up out here? And he said, 
that he actually got caught up in that case, Holmes, and he gave up a little too much information, and they wiggled him out there. Of course, I flight him immediately. Of course, I didn't see no paperwork. I didn't have to do all that. He told me that he fucking told, and I fucking told him, SAS, motherfucker, man, noodle. I was active. Uh, I inactivated him right there, and that was what it was, and that's about where it went, you know. Uh, the Vato said too much, and he, he, I don't know what, if he thought I was just going to be like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Fucking just come on, hide right here. Uh uh, give me the fucking in the head. Ah, ah, ah. You know what I mean? I was on him, tiger. And that's what it was, man. So if anything, watch out. I got him, Vato. You know what I mean? A little bit. And I never seen the Vato again. He went to the Oyo. I went to the Oyo. And, and that's where we parted ways. Anyways, with that being said, man, I hope that you guys move fast for a purpose. I hope that you go out there and get it, man. Hustle for your familia. That's what matters at the end of the day. You know, there's hardships in this gang life, man. I'm not trying to deter you from doing your thing. Get your wiggle on, Holmes. If you want to smash like a motherfucking Norteño, Sureño, Bulldog, MSA, whatever you want to be like, Holmes, do it. Do it G-like. But I'm just saying, man, just know, man, that for every action, there's a repercussion. And in that fashion, you already know what it is, man. Shout out to all the Vatos, man, that are out there doing their tiempo. You know what time it is, Holmes. The gun. Bang, bang.